All right. Hey, you guys, this is Dr. Rob, Dr. Randy. We are the Happy Healthy Guys. It is Wellness Wednesday. So excited to be back on with you, my brother. What's up, man? Last week, we couldn't be on together. I know, man. Nobody wins alone. I felt like one, but it didn't feel the same. Hey, I'll tell you what, what, though. um, We had a lot of feedback from the post that you put up there with that recipe that uh, that you you did last week. What's that? Apparently, a lot of people love spaghetti. Yeah, man. So, uh, so for the people that weren't that didn't get to see the episode last week, definitely go back to that episode because just just give them a quick bite, um, no pun intended, of what it is that you were talking about with that recipe. Yeah, some good conversations started too about how to replace or use different types of noodles. So uh, anyway, I thought it was good and keep the comments coming, man. We're loving it and uh, it helps us kind of shape our message and help, you know, maybe bring up topics that you guys are wanting more information on. So. Yeah, abs- abs- absolutely. Sounds good. Hey, Andy, how you doing, man? So yes, chiropractic. Absolutely. We love chiropractic. Everything that we talk about Ooh, yeah. has everything to do with the principles of chiropractic. We are uh, above, down and inside out for sure to, uh, to the absolute, absolute core, which is, which is really You know, it's one of those things where, you know, for you and I, when it comes to health and people always ask us questions, whether, you know, whether I'm on vacation or I see somebody in a grocery store, it seems like every single time that somebody comes up to me, they're asking me how they can be able to get rid of some kind of a symptom, right? Whether it be neck pain, headaches, allergies, any of those kind of things. And, you know, from our perspective, when somebody's asking us about those things, for us, it's really not about the symptom. It's really about what's causing it. Here, there we go. For some reason, uh, Be Live TV is cutting in and out today. So. I'm going to give uh, Dr. Randy a second to jump back up, up on here. So I apologize about that. Not sure where it is that he went exactly. Hey, hey, there you are. So, so we're back on. So, so we're just talking about just above, down, inside out principles as far as chiropractic goes. That it's really not about the symptom. It's about why that person's body's not functioning correctly. Is exactly why it is that they had that symptom. So, to the core, we always look at the body as going, okay, what's the cause? But then from a chiropractic perspective and being experts with working with the nervous system, we know that the nervous system is what controls every single cell tissue and function inside the body. So we got to make sure that that is always working 100 percent. Ain't that right, Dr. Randy? No, no doubt. You live your life, you know, through your nerve system. So you might want to take care of it. And I always hate too, you know, how chiropractic can get kind of thrown into the, the allopathic world of, hey, wait till you have a problem and then go see a doctor. You know, so sometimes chiropractic can fall into that as a treatment or a therapy for a symptom or a condition. You know, so, hey, my neck hurts, I'll go see the chiropractor, or my back hurts, I'll go see the chiropractor, or I've got acid reflux, I'll go see the chiropractor. But it's like, wait a second, chiropractic care is about not treating a symptom or a condition, but about making sure your body can adapt to its environment, chemically, because the importance of the nerve system uh, and the protection that the spinal column provides uh, and how easily at times it can become subluxated in a world that is full of stress everywhere you turn around. So, uh, so yeah, chiropractic is our heart and soul, not necessarily because, you know, we think everybody needs to be adjusted. We just think everybody needs to know the health principle of above, down, inside out so they can make decisions and be proactive with their health. And, you know, instead of reacting, being uh, proactive and, uh, and taking responsibility, right, which is, which is our message, don't wait till it's too late, don't wait till you're sick, act now, take action, and that's why we exist as the happy, healthy guys. We love to help people take, take action and create outrageous health. Absolutely. And so let's talk, let's talk about.
questions that we get a lot of times from people because we talk so much about, there you are, Dr. Randy, not sure why we keep on going in and out. I think it's a be live thing today. I apologize about that, you guys. But one of the questions that we get from people is, why is it that even if they're eating keto or they're doing the intermittent fasting, why is it that they can't lose weight? So we want to answer that question for you guys today. And there's really five, five reasons that we came up with for that. The first one being what it is that you were just talking about before we were really interrupted by the internet, but uh, it's, it really has everything to do with, with mindset, right? What our mindset is and what our belief system is about that. And you got some good examples when we were talking just a few minutes ago with that belief system. You want to just let, let everybody know what it is that you were talking about with that, Randy. Talk, talk to mindset and how that could be stopping people from losing weight. Yeah, well, it's no longer a theory. We know science and, and studies prove that, you know, the power of our mind, that our thoughts do shape um, our reality. Our thoughts really are more powerful than reality, which is kind of crazy. If you've ever taken accountability or sorry, looking at the things that you believe or think or how you think, excuse me, or how you speak about yourself or the thoughts you believe about yourself. And unfortunately, a lot of the thoughts and the things we say to ourselves are very negative and toxic and they're not even true but because we believe them to be true they're now our reality and so sometimes we can be our own worst enemy as we self-sabotage our success and not only in our health but sometimes this can be the key ingredient and why or the missing key ingredient and why you're not successful in a lot of things in your life because you have these strong limiting beliefs that you don't deserve it, that you're not good enough, it's my genetics, um, it's my age, it's my skin color, it's, it's uh, the family I was born into. It, it could be so many things, and I, we could go through thousands of them, but really it starts here, and I think for us, building a strong mindset that's built on gratitude, positive thinking, and knowing who we are, and that God created you to live an amazing life and have great success, and believing that, I think that's more than half the battle. That may be the hardest thing is to fix this. Once this gets fixed, life does get a lot easier. And we're always working on it. It's not like you fix it and then it's done. You're always working on it and taking accountability of your thoughts and your words. Yeah, absolutely. And from a practical standpoint, because I always want to talk about practicality, right? What, it, what is something that we can be able to get ourselves into a habit of doing things that take us out of that negativity or that negative mindset. And from a practical standpoint, I know I'm talking about myself even personally, one of the things that I had to do for myself to get myself out of that belief system, because really your truth is what it is that you believe, right? And so one of the things that I would do is like 30 minutes before going to bed, I would be checking emails or looking even at Facebook. And that's one of those things that can cause a lot of stress because everybody that we see on Facebook is like perfect or Instagram is airbrushed or we look at emails and that starts creating stress that may not even exist. I would look at it going, oh my gosh, I would look at my emails, for example, and my emails, that's really somebody else's to-do list for you, right? Because it's people asking you to get stuff done for them, right? So I'm looking at somebody else's to-do list that I have no control over right before I'm going to bed causing stress. And what we know about stress is it causes your insulin, your cortisol levels to go up, which puts your body into fat storage, not fat burning. And that could also be a, a reason why you don't lose weight. So get that stress out of your life. Don't be looking at your phone right before you go to bed and putting yourself into that, that mindset right there is a big thing that you can do just from a practical standpoint. Instead, replace that bad habit with having a journal next to your bed and writing five things that you're grateful, like Dr. Randy was talking about with gratitude, but write five things that you're grateful for about today. And the challenge even on that is looking at some of the bad things that happened during the day and saying, you know, why is it that I was grateful for that, right? So I don't know, let's say you were in a car accident. Why is it that I was grateful for the fact that I had a car accident? Well, I was grateful for the fact that I had a car accident because that helped me to, you know what, I could have, let's say I didn't have that car accident, I would have showed up somewhere else. It could have been a lot worse, or my scenario or situation could have been worse, or what is it that I could have learned from that, having that accident as well? Whatever it is, just ask yourself, how can I be grateful 
for the pain yeah. that I'm in as well. And it changes everything as far as your mindset, especially right before you go to bed. There, there's always a silver lining. Sometimes it's hard to see, but you can always find it and, and change and totally spin how, what you're going through, you're embracing that adversity and you're, you're not, you're not getting defeated all day long. You're like growing and improving and embracing. Hey, man, we all go through this stuff, whatever it is. But sometimes we're just too hard on ourselves. And, you know, for a lot of us, when's the last time we gave ourselves permission to take great care of us? Because we believe that everybody deserves to be happy and healthy. But do you really believe that in your own mind? And if you don't, that's got to be fixed. And that's a process. But that has to happen, number one. Now, there's some physical things we're going to talk about that you need to be doing as well. But if we don't get this corrected, you may be pushing that boulder uphill unnecessarily, which we wouldn't wish that on our worst enemy, to be quite frank. Is Heck, heck no. If you're, if you're a mom, don't beat yourself up. If you got your kids to school on the first day of school and they were dressed and they were alive, great job right there. Great job. So the second thing and one of the reasons why you may not be able to lose weight is because you're eating too much protein. So a lot of people think even with the ketogenic diet, you're supposed to just be pounding protein. But that could definitely be a reason physiologically why your body is not losing weight. Right, Dr. Randy? Yeah, I think it's probably one of the biggest mistakes people make when they think they're doing paleo or keto or some type of a fat burning type program. Um, or they're focused on losing weight with a the diet. They're eating way too much protein. And remember from our previous talks and uh, the things we've been teaching now, if when you eat protein, your body still will release insulin, just like when you eat carbohydrate. Not quite as much, but it will still do it. And so remember, insulin is a bulking hormone, so it makes you big, all right? Unless you're working out like twice a day, seven days a week, if you're eating you know, all the protein, and you're, you're going to cause some serious weight gain or you're going to have a tough time losing it because you'll never really get into fat burning. And one of the keys to it is you're always having to snack and that you're always hungry, which we'll talk about. But when your body's burning fat, you're eating moderate amounts of protein, um, eating higher fat, lower carbohydrate or the right carbohydrates, it's a lot healthier and you find yourself being full, feeling better and not having those blood sugar swings. Uh, and you'll definitely notice it with your weight because I remember back before I got cancer, I would eat seven times a day eating about 300 grams of protein per day to be 185 pounds. Now I eat about 60 to maybe 80 grams of protein. So I reduced it by 80%. I'm about 20 pounds lighter, but now, you know, my body's healthier. I stay in fat burning. I don't have the sugar cravings. I have less inflammation, more mental clarity, and I feel 20 years younger. So, Which brings us to the next one. So the next one is snacking. And, and right, right in line with what it is that you were saying, I mean, that could even be looked at as snacking. What it is that we've been taught is the eating the six small meals a day all day long and or snacking. Yeah. That was my issue because I'm like, this is great. I can eat six meals a day every single day. That's fantastic, yeah, right? All your hot buttons of just eating all the time. <laughs> Yeah. So as a result there, I was overweight. I didn't, you know, I'm, I'm like, Hey, but I'm eating, you know, I'm eating my proteins. I'm getting my fats. I'm getting my vegetables in there. Everything that I'm eating is organic. This has got to be good. But six times a day, what it was doing is it was causing my insulin levels and my cortisol levels to be just spiked up through the roof all day long. So all day long, my body was in fat storage instead yeah. of fat burning. And that's what happens when we're eating a bunch of times. And there's some people that are just like those strange freaked out genetics that they can be able to, to do that. Or if you've got somebody that's like a, a marathon runner or a triathlete or a competitive athlete that, you know, they can, they can, they can be able to afford to put more meals into their bodies more times a day and not have a problem. You know what that, those, those guys, that's, that's called, those are freaks of nature, right? That's, that's not, that's not most people, right? That's not the normal person like me. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, I had to work out literally six to seven days a week, sometimes twice a day to stay really fit and lean eating all that food. You know, so it just it just doesn't make sense to constantly be eating all day long when we know historically there were times we didn't have access to food all day. Not to mention, usually the food we're reaching for isn't always the best for us, but you should be able to stay full for a good five hours, no problem, and have steady blood sugar. 
And if you can't, you're basically already pre-diabetic, if not already a diabetic. You're headed down that road. So um, the snacking thing is a huge reason why you're not losing weight. Or I hear people say, well, I used to snack in college when I played basketball and practiced all day long. And then when I, in my 30s, now I'm snacking and I can't lose weight. Yeah, because you were constantly active and now you sit at a desk. So all those extra calories and insulin, you're making it impossible to lose weight and burn fat. Yeah, and a lot of the times when you felt like you needed to, you need to eat or you're hungry, you're really not hungry. What you really are is you're thirsty. Yeah, so you got to make sure hungry, that, right? It's one yeah, of the reasons so you, why you're not losing weight. Yeah, it's, it's, it's gotta, you got to make sure that you're, you're keeping yourself hydrated. Uh, another one of the reasons and the points is not not getting enough fats. Uh, Jeff Stiba is on there right now. He said, can you eat too much good fat? And that's what we're talking about right now is most people are not getting enough good, healthy fats. It's not getting enough fats. It's not getting enough healthy fats, right? Yeah. I mean, most of us probably don't eat enough fat. Um, we just, it's been ingrained in our, in our psyche for so many years. It almost puts us into paralysis. Like, oh my gosh, it's two eggs or four eggs. What's enough? Is that too much? We're just worried so much about eating too much fat, even though we know and the science proves it's just not true. Can you eat too much fat? Well, yeah, you can eat too much of anything, right? You can drink too much water. You can eat too many vegetables. But what we're saying, and I think one of the reasons why eating fat is so beneficial is because the importance of fat to the body. Remember, you can live without eating one single carbohydrate just fine. But you die without fat. you got to have it. And you want to get it from a great source. So if you're eating a lot of uh, damaged fats, trans fats, oxidized fats, those can pile up very quickly. You know, we talk about putting the good fats in our body. So like avocado, olives and extra virgin olive oil, red palm fruit oil, uh, grass fed butter or ghee. Of course, our new product, SCT oil, which is, you know, super rich with nutrients and antioxidants, perfect for cooking and for fat burning and mental clarity. Um, um, you know, germinated walnuts, pecans, seeds, um, raw or germinated are perfect. I'm probably missing a few. Dark chocolate, um, maybe 80% cacao or better to get all the benefits there. But if you're eating a lot of good fat, you're going to stay full longer. So I'm tired of all the low-fat yogurt garbage out there and the non-fat foods. They're a complete joke. When you rip out the fat, you replace it with chemicals, sugar, and artificial sweeteners and flavorings. So you want to eat the fats. If you're cutting out all your fat, you're going to be tired, lethargic, cranky, and hungry all day long. Replace your carbohydrates with fat, moderate protein, and eat a lot of good carbohydrates like the fibered vegetables, uh, the low sugar fruits. But yeah, add healthy fat um, and you'll stay full longer and not have those cravings that we can get when the blood sugar drops and you're going to make that bad decision. Yep, which brings us to the next one. A bad decision that people make is this. They're, they're damaging their endocrine system, and most people have no idea that they're doing it. And the people that are doing this are the people who are just pounding artificial sweeteners, um, artificial colorings. Anything that's toxic to our body just really wrecks your endocrine system. But specifically, we're talking about the things like the Splenda, right, or the Equal, or the sweet and low, those things are neurotoxins yeah. to your body, which means that it's going to damage your endocrine system. And as a result, your body has no idea what it's supposed to do. It can't, it can't hear your hormones telling your body to actually burn fat, right? It's shutting, it's shutting off all your leptin receptors, which is what tells your body to burn fat for fuel. And those things just don't work. And the lie that we've been taught is that it's all about, okay, well, it's the calorie, right? Right, so calories you, in, calories out. Not exactly. all are created equal. It's how they impact your body, your nervous system, your hormone activity, right? It's not the same, which is why eating a higher fat diet of good fats versus a high carbohydrate diet is the beauty of how it impacts your hormones in your body and how it balances that and keeps your body wanting to burn more fat. But we did an episode on this, remember, because uh, I had talked about um, – uh, Dr. Russell Blaylock's book, the medical yeah. uh, the neurosurgeon, actually, he did the, the book called The Taste That Kills. I yeah. read that book 25 years ago, not 25, 20 years ago. And um, 
once you read that, you'll never look at it the same. These are drugs. So we were, we were talking earlier. So we see a lot of patients and they're like, yeah, I, I drink a lot of water. I, I, I put crystal light in it. And I'm like, <laughs> it's, not, it's not crystal light. It's chemical light. <laughs> you're, you're blasting your body with devastating chemicals that destroy the endocrine system, inflame the brain and nervous system, and trick your body into craving more carbohydrates and sugar. And so instead of people drinking, you know, mineral water, spring water, clean sources, they're, they're putting all these chemicals into their water and they're drinking diet sodas, the, the chemical lights, um, and a lot of these health companies out there, right? Drink this drink. If you ever looked at the ingredients of what's in it, so I think it's a big mistake. We're cutting calories, but we're increasing chemicals. And that is a foolproof way to struggle with your weight and with your health. Amen. Uh, India says, amen, eat good fat. Absolutely. Amen. Thanks. Thanks, India. Larry Wayne Miller, SCT oil equals home run intermittent fasting. Hey, I got a bone to pick with Larry Wayne, by the way. Oh, what is it? He posted this morning making his coffee with his SCT oil and he had this mug and it was an Arkansas Razorback coffee mug. <laughs> and, uh, I didn't know whether uh, I didn't know what to say, but I said it could ruin the taste of your coffee <laughs> with that um, with that type of a mug. And he said he said, actually, it makes it a lot sweeter. So anyway, I, uh, I had a good time with that. Larry Wayne and I go back and forth. Larry Wayne's actually been a patient of mine, him and his wife, Kim, and their two boys really for almost 14 years. And uh, it's been pretty cool working with him. And he's been posting a lot of pictures and videos about the SCT oil and how he's enjoying that. But I had to give him a plug and uh, tell him, appreciate the support. I got to get him a Texas Longhorns mug. Absolutely. Okay. I, like, like all his posts, Showing the guns, he's got the gun show out. I like it. It's good. It's good stuff. <laughs> it, one of the things, and going back to the artificial sweetener as well, yeah. thing because I think that's a big deal for people. It's 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 always whenever I go out to eat, even if I'm eating amongst friends who know what it is that we do, they'll still pick the Splenda. And it's funny because if you go out to eat with us, it's you know we're with friends. People always watch us to see what it is that we're eating, right? Because they want to eat that, but then they'll think they're making the healthy choice by 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 getting the Splenda. I don't judge people about that, but here's the thing. A lot of people that question even the post that I put last posted last week where I said, is this Splenda a healthy choice or not a healthy choice? And some of the people that said, well, it, they didn't say it was a healthier choice, but what they did say is that, well, what about the research? But here's the thing, you know, like we talked about with, with Dr. Emmett, they says simply eat real food. If we use those principles to say, hey, I'm gonna put real food into my body, I don't need a research study to tell me if it's good or bad to put chlorine inside my body, which is what the Splenda is, which is why your body doesn't know what to do with it. So it literally goes directly down to your colon. So it's not digestible calories because your body's like, what is this stuff? And then it stores the chlorine or the chemical in your fat cells, which causes your body to actually store more fat. So we don't need research to tell us whether we should or we shouldn't do that. And so I think that's a mistake that a lot of people make is they'll justify what it is they do based on whether or not they, they need research. But you know what? We got to we gotta tell people, start using common sense. If you can't pronounce what it is that you're putting into your body, then don't put it in there. It's just, I mean, it's just dose, common sense. Yeah, the poison isn't, I don't care about the dose, you know, the poison's in the dose, but at what dose of a, of a chemical toxin are you willing to put into your body, especially when we know it's maybe not what you did today, but it's what you've been doing for all these years. And then you keep filling up that bucket like Dr. Dan Papa talks about. And you get that overflow, that tipping point where now your body expresses symptoms or disease. And we know that you can build disease for decades before you ever feel anything. So you're like, hey, I did X, Y and Z and I didn't feel anything from it. What are you just waiting for something to go bad under no um, it's never a good idea on any level to start putting in micro doses of any toxin. And listen, we're you can't eliminate them all. But, you know, hey, let's educate ourselves. Let's remove what we can. Let's detox what we can. And um, but I thought that post was interesting. And I guess we can all justify anything. Um, apparently so. But I thought it was a good post and. A lot of good feedback on it, I thought. 
Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, it is, it is, it is what it is. And it's even like when we were in Spain, you know, yeah. it was funny because, you know, things are, are bad for you when they'll take like the, the oil and we had taken a picture of it while we were there. You know, you take a picture of the, in the supermarket, they have the, the rows of oils on the shelves in all the way right on the, in, in the bottom of the shelf, kind of in the corner, you can see this oil, this completely different color than all of the other oils. Right. And it says on the bottle, Alcita, which means oil in Spanish. Alcita oil, which means that it's that there are Alcita mal, which means bad oil. So it says it right on the bottle that it's bad oil, right? I know they, they know it's warning you. At least in America, there's almost no warning. You see, there's, you know, expeller pressed organic canola oil. And it's like, oh, that must be good. I mean, we, uh, we're deceptive the way we do it here in America. It was refreshing in Spain where we were because, like, you didn't see any high fructose corn syrup. The condiments were all packets of extra virgin olive oil, you know? Um, so you just didn't see the toxic chemical load that we see in America. And so all these chemicals and artificial sweeteners and flavorings and additives will wreck not only your endocrine system and your metabolism, but your overall health. If you struggle with your weight and with your health, I would challenge you, we challenge you, take accountability of everything you're putting in your body and what you're putting on your body that could be disrupting your, um, your body's normal function. Absolutely, and amen. Hey, we've got a question. Uh, Dr. Kevin Knopfsinger is asking the question, what is the difference between MCT oil and SCT oil? So I'm going to let you hit that real quick, Dr. Randy. Um, I got to get something real quick and I'll be right back. Okay. So just real quickly, Doc, it's, um, you know, a, a medium chain triglyceride is an MCT. An SCT is a short chain triglyceride. So we know the shorter the chains, the higher um, the heat point, the more stable they are and the more absorbable they are for the body. So they can get right into the bloodstream, into the stomach, into the liver for energy. And they just really don't require any bile or pancreatic activity. And so the beauty of an SCT oil is you can replace a lot of your MCTs because of the higher smoke point. Because remember, heat, light, and oxygen are what um, damage and oxidize fats, which can create a problem. SCT oils are almost immune to that. On top of that, they contain higher levels of the short chain fatty acid, butyric acid, which is beautiful for the colon, the gut, the immune system, it's the preferred source of fuel. So there's, an, I'm just scratching the surface of all the benefits, but it's really a great replacement for an MCT. It's more stable and it's very, very absorbable for a lot of people who get gastrointestinal distress from coconut oil or from an MCT oil as they're trying to get those healthy fats into their body. Not to mention that it's flipping good. It tastes, it sure tastes so good. <laughs> yeah, it tastes a whole lot better. It is hypoallergenic. Um, it's perfect for anybody who has a dairy issue or a dairy sensitivity um, or who's really worried about, you know, um, damaging healthy fats. Uh, I use SET oil now. We both do for everything. In fact, I believe what made my spaghetti so great um, was the SET oil because of the flavor and how it soaks into the food. It's such a clean oil. It's crazy how it just gets right into your system almost instantaneously uh, and the energy, the metabolism benefits, the brain function. It's just like you're getting ready-made ketones in their most natural, perfect form. Got it. And his next question after that is, can you give some examples of an SCT oil? So almost right on cue when I said I was going to grab something. Well, I had to get my hat because people give me a hard time if I'm not wearing my hat. So I had to get my hat. But then this is this is also an example of, of the SCT oil that we have. I can't, there's a glare on me right now, but that's what it looks like. Let me hold on. But while I'm doing that, what would be some examples of some SCT oil, Dr. Randy? Yeah, a lot of times you'll find um, SCT, some short chain triglycerides in dairy, right? So a lot of times you can get that, you know, obviously with dairy, it's getting a great source and it's from the right cow. You know, Holstein versus, or Jersey cows versus Holstein, so they're genetically correct that they're grass fed, but a lot of dairy products, you'll find some short chain fatty acids. What's interesting too, is that your body can ferment fiber to make short chain fatty acids. How cool is that? So our body's so smart, 
it can take the fiber, insoluble and soluble fiber that you get from your fruits and vegetables, ferment that in the colon and produce butyric acids and short chain fats for the body. Now, some people have really compromised digestion, gut dysbiosis, microbial issues. So they're not going to be very good at that. And they're going to struggle. And too much foods like that can cause horrible bloating and gas and distress. This is why a Delivering it straight in its pure form can get even more therapeutic benefits. But that's all the more reason why you want to incorporate a lot of good fibrous vegetables and uh, and healthy fruits, low sugar fruits into your diet, because you can still get those short chain fats that your body um, that your body can make. Absolutely. So there there you have it. Hopefully that answered your question, Doctor Kevin. Question, thanks for the question, Dr. Kevin. David, thanks. He says you guys rock. You rock as well. So that's it. So I think we went a little bit longer than we expected to, but that was the five reasons that you're not losing weight. Number one was your mindset, your belief system. Change your belief. Change your belief, number one, about yourself. Uh, we talked about the eating too much protein, too much snacking, not enough, not enough good, healthy fats in your diet, and then damaging your endocrine system by putting toxic chemicals into your body. So those are the five reasons right there. So right. No chemicals. That's it. So Dr. Rain is going to be here in Dallas, Texas tomorrow. We're going to be yeah, doing some filming for you guys. So I'm excited about that as well. And so we're going to get some of our, uh, the rest of our videos recorded. We'll have our, our three-part series ready to go from our uh, experience and what we learned in Spain in our two months there and how to transform your life in 21 days. So I'm ready to rock this and get it recorded. Absolutely. Myself as well. So there you go. So there is the Happy Healthy Guys segment, the five reasons why you're not losing weight. We'll see you guys next Wednesday, possibly even tomorrow. You guys have a great day. Have a happy, healthy week. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.